Welcome to Binghamton University. This is a great webinar. I'm glad that you're here. It's called The Day in the Life of a Binghamton University Student. So as, as uh, participants are kind of filtering in, we'll kind of give it a couple minutes um, and welcome and thank you. And my background here is the Admissions Center. I know some of you may have come to visit us over the past year or so and taken a campus tour and you would have started off at the Admissions Center. It's kind of the hub of of where our students begin to take their campus tours. Um, and around that admission center, I got a bunch of tour guides who took their picture that day. So I'm glad you're here. You're gonna be joined here in a few minutes by some of our actual Binghamton University students. They're starting to filter in now and they're gonna tell you their story. So I'm glad you're here. My name is Joe Tisi and I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions. I'm also an alum. Went to Binghamton, boy, graduated many years ago. And I love Binghamton. I love the city of Binghamton. I love the Binghamton University community. It's just an amazing place. So my hope is you learn a lot about us, who we are today, um, what it's really like to be a Binghamton University student here. Um, so I'm going to hand off and introduce you to Byron. Byron, would you introduce yourself? Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Byron Gittens. I am the Senior Assistant Director here in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at Binghamton University. Uh, Binghamton's a great place. I am from Queens, so it's definitely great to know that I'm here working at the number one premier public research institution in the SUNY system, which is great. Um, I have, ex I would say, extensive um, admissions experience. I've been doing this for about 10 years, so I've been at other public uh, research institutions uh, such as Maryland and UConn, and I got to say, Binghamton's Great place to be. So congratulations on your admissions. And certainly we're looking forward to having you on this call with us and this or the Zoom. And um, we will be looking forward to answering a lot of questions and concerns any students may have. And Christy, would you say hello? Of course. Hi, everybody. My name is Christy Friedrichsen. I'm one of our admissions counselors here. Um, I'm actually an alum. I graduated in 2016 with my bachelor's in psychology. Um, and I uh, travel to Connecticut and Texas. Um, and I've been here about four years. And I'll be in the background answering your questions in the question and answer function, which is at the bottom of your screen. You'll see two speech bubbles. Um, ask your questions there and I'll help answer. Isabel, would you, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Isabel. I am a senior graduating on Saturday. Um, I was a double major in psychology and sociology, and I have a minor in Africana studies. Um, I am a tour guide, um, and I have a leadership position in the tour guide program, which we will talk about later on. Um, and I'm looking forward to sharing all of my experiences and memories that I have about Binghamton as I get ready to graduate. It's awesome that I have this opportunity to talk to new students. And Kelly, would you say hello? You're muted, Kelly. Oh, sorry about that, I was muted. <laughs> um, my name is Kelly, I'm a junior, I'll be a senior next year. I'm majoring in environmental studies and geography and I also have a minor in health and wellness studies. I'm from Brooklyn, New York and I'm also a tour guide and I'm excited to share all my experiences with you. And Victoria. Sure, hi everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Victoria, I'm a senior here studying mechanical engineering. I'm also on the four plus one track to get my master's in one additional year, still at Binghamton. And I'm from Elmira, New York originally. I'm also a tour guide and thank you for joining us. And Andrew. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Andrew. I'm a senior majoring in integrative neuroscience, minoring in biological anthropology on the pre-PA track. Um, I work with all of these lovely people in admissions, um, and I can't wait to tell you more about my experience as a student. Terrific. Thank you. So what I want to do now, again, the important thing is that you get to hear our students' story. And I know um, they gathered together and put together a presentation and talked a lot about that. So Andrew, would you share your screen and start your presentation? Sure. I think I should be able to. And while we're getting set up, just remember, um, we're not using the chat today, so um, go ahead and put your questions um, in the question and answer function, and we'll help answer those there. We'll also do some live Q&A. Sorry, I'm muted. My fault. Um, hi, everybody. Again, I realized before I didn't say where I'm from. Um, I'm from Mount Kisco, New York, in Westchester County, um, and I just want to tell you a little bit about my experience at Binghamton. Um, all these pictures, I'm going to talk about four of them specifically, um, just to tell you a little bit more about my personal experience. So up in the top left corner, 
if you see, there's a picture of me, you know, with one of my fellow tour guides, Liam. Um, and the reason why I think this picture is super important is because um, I started as a tour guide at Binghamton, which is an awesome experience, um, you know, talking to students like all of you about why I love Binghamton. But, you know, a lot of the, me and Andrew and Kelly, we have all um, been, we have now are, have leadership positions um, in the tour guide program, which is a really common theme at Binghamton. Uh, a lot of our let me rephrase that, most at slash all of our clubs and organizations are student run. Um, you know, the treasurer of the club that clubs that you're in will be a student, the president will be a student. Um, all, all of those leadership positions are taken on by students, which I think is really unique that Binghamton, you know, trusts us to do that. Uh, you know, they choose us, they choose to admit you because, you know, you have this passion for being a leader um, for things that you're passionate about. So I just thought that was a really um, awesome experience uh, example of how much Binghamton, you know, our students are just so eager to, you know, join a club, express their interest, contribute to the club, and then later on, a lot of the times you will run for a leadership position, and a lot of students are like that, and we have over 300 clubs and organizations ranging from, you know, something as casual as the Cheese Club, where people just get together and talk and eat about cheese, to the Pre-PA Society or the Pre-Law Society, which are more professionally driven, um, and those are all run by students, and even the greater student government, the student association that is also run by students. They manage the budget, the multi-million dollar budget for all of our student clubs and organizations. So yeah, that is that picture. Um, another picture I want to discuss is the one right next to that, me sitting at the table. Um, like I said, I am a sociology major um, and, you know, obviously every day I go to class um, and I chose this picture because there's faculty in this picture and the sociology, the faculty of the sociology department, and I'm sure my colleagues will discuss about their respective faculty. Um, faculty at Binghamton are incredible. They have made my experience just out of sight, truly. They have taught me so much. And um, what you'll also hear a lot is that a lot of our students are involved in undergraduate research. So my daily routine um, involved helping one of my professors, his name was Dr. Michael West, write a book on the first president of independent Ghana. Um, one day I literally just walked into his office. I, had, I had, was taking a class with him. And I walked into his office and I just said, hey, what are you working on? Can I help you out? Um, and he said that he needed help writing, not writing his book. I didn't do any of the writing, but I did a lot of the analysis and the gathering of information. Um, and he actually paid me out of his own pocket, which is a really common theme that a lot of professors would do, will do. Um, and even if you don't get paid, you can get credit for your research. And it's also just a great experience learning how to do that, whether or not you want to go into research in the future. Just doing research is a really awesome opportunity. So that is something I did on a daily basis throughout my undergrad graduate career. Um, and then the picture right next to that with the Binghamton University and the TV. Um, the reason why I chose this picture is because I'm standing with one of our alum. His name is Nelson Marr. Um, he's an education attorney. I'm also on the pre-law track. I forgot to mention that. Um, and you don't really think about this when you're first year students, but the connections that you'll make with alum and the, the involvement that a school's alum has with current students is key because once you start looking for jobs and you need recommendations and you need connections, alum will be there for you. Um, and I actually did an internship this previous summer through the Harper Law Council um, where I was working at Bronx Legal Services in the education unit representing special needs students. Um, and he was my supervising attorney and he went to Binghamton. Um, and what the Harper Law Council did was they actually funded the internship. So I didn't have to do any other work this past summer. I just focused on that internship. Um, and we have so many different in summer opportunities, internships, but even winter break internships. Um, and just as a senior now, looking back, um, making those connections, and it's really easy to do at Binghamton because we are at alum or everywhere um, is really important for what you decide for your future endeavors. And then the last thing I will talk about is the picture right below that. That is just my freshman year dorm with my roommate Katie sitting on her bed. Um, I lived in Dickinson when I was at Binghamton. I actually lived there for three years. Um, up until senior year. And um, I think, honestly, one of the main reasons why I chose Binghamton was because of how they approach living. Um, you know, you don't just come home to a building at the end of the day, you come home to a community, um, a little neighborhood, it's, it's a collection of buildings. Um, and also what's key is that there isn't any freshman only housing except for two buildings on campus. So if that is something that you're interested in, you can take advantage of it. But I really liked how I was living next to older students as well, because they've 
were at Binghamton longer than me and they took me under their wing and they become they became some of my best friends um, and of course every dorm has their traditions and I'm sure my fellow tour guides will talk about their favorite but um, that is also one of the main reasons why I chose Binghamton it, that's where some of my best memories were made and that's it for me for now sure um, sounds good I think that I am next so this is me um, so yeah, um, just a couple of things about me again. My name is Andrew. Um, I'm a big science major, um, neuroscience and bio biological anthropology. Um, I'm pre-PA, so it's physician assistant. Um, I'm the president of that organization on campus. Um, I've done research in microbial biofilms, so just like microbiology. Um, I love all kinds of sports, um, played in murals, basically my whole like um, undergraduate career with friends from home that I went to high school with. Um, so that was pretty rewarding. You can see me playing basketball at the East Gym. Um, I love that. Um, so the East Gym is a really great facility, just so I can speak about that um, a little bit, because I don't know if you've heard much about that as incoming students. Um, so basically, it's the you, you would enter, um, you have a ton of basketball courts, a swimming pool, um, tons of cardio and fitness machines as well. Um, it's a really standard, up-to-date gym. Um, there are fitness classes taught by students. I have a ton of friends who are actual teachers of yoga, um, Pilates, um, things like that, karate, stuff like that. So you can take those classes um, if you have a gym membership at Binghamton. Um, that's my freshman year dorm over there. I also lived in Dickinson. Um, pretty like guy looking room, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, pretty basic. Um, yeah, so a couple of things about me. Um, I love in general just to spend time with my friends. Um, couple of pictures of me doing like a secret Santa with my friends. Um, so I lived on campus for two years and I've lived off campus for two. Um, so there are a ton of options to live in and around the city of Binghamton to kind of like immerse yourself in the culture of the city um, of where you're attending university, regardless of where you go. It's really great to be able to uh, go out into, the, into that city or that environment and um, try new things. I have a, a couple of slides after the rest of our tour guides introduce kind of their um, lives at Binghamton. I'm going to show some different pictures um, of the food and culture of Binghamton and our campus. Um, so definitely a big foodie. Um, love to do things and just go out with my friends. <clears throat> um, a couple of different holidays. So we have Halloween, St. Patrick's Day on there. Um, we have me and my tour guide um, supervisors right in the middle. Um, and then the people I do research with and my research poster on something um, pretty boring to most people on like genes and microbiology and I won't get into it. Um, but yeah, um, and then on the right is something that I'm really passionate about. I'm the president of the Pre-Physician Assistant Society. Um, I also work as a patient care technician or a nurse's aide off campus at one of our local hospitals. Um, so I love to just be involved in um, preparing students for the same career as me. So this is the, I've tabled um, ran events like a suture clinic. So my club um, through the student association, which is all student funded, um, got these little suture pads, which they use in medical school, PA school, stuff like that. And we had um, three or four PAs from our local community, the hospital I work at actually, um, come in and show us how to do it. So we bought a ton of materials and it was just a really cool hands-on event for, for people like me interested in going into medicine. Um, so just something that I thought I would share, um, just kind of like the opportunities that are available. <clears throat> And hi, so once again, my name is Kelly. As I said before, I'm a junior double major in environmental studies and geography. So I'll start by giving like a brief background on why I picked Binghamton, how I kind of ended up here. So when I was looking at colleges, I knew I wanted to do something in environmental studies, something in science, but I felt that if I majored in science, then the only career for me would to be a scientist in a white lab coat, and that's not something I wanted. But when I came to Binghamton, I saw that there's no walls between majors, so even though I ended up in a science major, I was still able to take part and do so much else outside of that major, and I think that that's something that's really important when exploring and trying to decide what you want to do with your life. So one thing that was really impactful to me when I came in as a freshman was the Emerging Leaders Program. And I want to highlight this because all of you are going to be first year students at Binghamton. So in the picture in the bottom right hand corner, that's a picture of me and my knowledge community. So Emerging Leaders Program is a one semester program where you're grouped with about 13 other students, two mentors, and you're doing a service learning project based on something you're interested in. So I was in environment and ecology, and this is from when I was a mentor. So I was part of this program for three years, a mentee, then a mentor, and then a program assistant. So that kind of guided me in getting 
rooted in wanting to be a leader, wanting to explore more, and also getting to know the, the local Binghamton community more. So if you're interested in any of that, I highly, highly recommend getting involved in that program. It's a really great way to kind of make friends right from the start and um, get to know like like-minded people in something that you're interested in while doing something impactful. And then when I was a junior, I became a residential assistant. I started off living in Hinman. I absolutely love it. It's a really great community. It, I got out of my comfort zone, participated in a bunch of dorm events. Um, but as an RA, I moved communities. So I was an RA in Dickinson. And so I want to highlight the picture right to, to the left of the one I just spoke about, where we're all standing around a banner. So all the residential communities have uh, some events that are really central to them. So in Hinman, there's Hinman Hysteria and Dorm Wars, and in Dickinson we have Mutant Mania. So this year for Mutant Mania we have to do a banner, so I want to uh, kind of talk about my experiences with that. Um, the banner is something that was really important to me, something that I really enjoyed doing, and it's something that really bonded the whole building and the whole community together. So if you want to get involved in a community, no matter where you live, there'll be something for you, and I think that that's also really important. Um, my staff, my RA staff is a picture to the left of that. We're all wearing denim. That's kind of our like tradition. I'm an RA in O'Connor, by the way. Um, and then I want to talk about my research. So like Andrew, I also did research. I started in the first year research immersion program and I continued on to do independent research after that. So I'm standing next to a poster and my research is on using drones and hyperspectral sensing to detect algal blooms. It sounds really complex, but Binghamton research is something that honestly incredible. I went all the way to San Francisco to present what I did and that was funded by the school. So alumni will give donations back to the school as Isabel talked about with alumni donations. So I was fully funded by Harper's Edge. So if you have any research ideas and projects, things like that, that's a really great way to get funding for that. Uh, and then the picture to the left of that shows my internship at the speaking center. And as you can see, we're all friends. We're having a lot of fun. And that's another thing I want to highlight. Binghamton isn't, Binghamton students aren't naturally competitive. We all want to help each other and we all want to make lasting bonds and friendships. So I, I'm still friends with a lot of people from my classes all the way from freshman year to now, from all my experiences, all my internships, and that's what really made this experience really powerful. And hi everyone, my name is Victoria again. I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering, also receiving my master's in mechanical engineering at Binghamton. Um, something I want to focus on is in the um, kind of the right hand side, you see two pictures there. One of the reasons I chose to come to Binghamton University specifically for engineering was their hands on approach to learning. I have gotten so many opportunities through research, through classes and through extra opportunities that I've actually sought out myself outside of class that time that I never thought I would ever receive in an education. One of my favorite things that I learned this past year was actually welding, as you can see me in my welding mask. And that was taught to me in the brand new fabrication lab that the um, that Binghamton University has really put in a lot of uh, money and time into this past year. And this is a great opportunity for us to do our hands on learning. Another thing I do want to point out is in the lower right hand corner. Um, this is just to show how our community and our education kind of intertwine. So in that lower right hand corner, I'm in I'm actually with students from one of my classes studying 3D printing. We went to an outreach event for the community of Binghamton University, for the community of Binghamton. And at that outreach event, we were teaching students and small children, some around the age of four and five, how to do 3D printing. While we were there, we actually ran across Professor Stanley Whittingham, doctor, who just won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry this past fall. He was also at the event talking with um, the community members as well, and that was a really cool opportunity showing once again just how accessible our faculty and staff are in and outside of the classroom. And then I came to Binghamton University because I wanted a great education, but I also wanted to be able to do other passions of mine. One of those was actually sports. So I started out doing intramural athletics down in the lower left hand corner. That's me and my um, intramural soccer team. Intramural athletics is something that you do with your friends at Binghamton University against other, other student groups at Binghamton University. And that's really a low commitment, low time commitment um, opportunity that you have. That's something I did freshman through senior year. In this past year, I actually joined the club rowing team. That's just to show that you're, you're never too old to join a new club or event. 
And that is something I was doing this past year with a great group of teammates and new people I met from all different disciplines and all different areas of the, of the school. Um, and so that was an opportunity I had this past year. And on the left hand side, you'll just see a little picture of my room from freshman year. That was my side of the room. I lived in Mountain View community, home to the engineering learning community, where we lived and learned with the same students. So the people I was living with were mainly the same students I was having class with. And that just was a really great way to get to know other members of the Binghamton University community, once again, in and outside of the classroom. That's something Binghamton does really well, is merging your life, your, the two halves of living and education. Finally, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Binghamton in general. Um, these are some pictures that um, I've had from over the last four years um, that just kind of culminate the experience from um, just like a, a, a why should you come here and why should you come and why is the city of Binghamton a great place to enjoy your four years of undergrad? Um, so just a couple of things. Um, I guess we can briefly run through all of them. Um, up on the left is our beautiful campus. We change those um, letters each year, or those numbers and letters, and obviously um, you, uh, seniors like to take pictures right by that upper left picture um, once they're graduated in their cabin gown and stuff. Um, so that's a super cool opportunity, and our campus is beautiful. That That's overlooking um, the Peace Squad. Um, our nature preserve is something that um, is a, a huge draw to our campus. Um, so we have a huge nature preserve behind our campus. So it kind of feels like a really, really large campus um, with all of the resources and, um, and, and really that small environment when you actually get into where near the classes are and where you're dorming. Um, so it has kind of like the best of both worlds in that sense where it's small, but then you can go out and take a hike in your backyard, basically. Um, so um, uh, those are some other shots of campus um, in the sunlight obviously um, and then that's the car uh, that's uh, the car in the nature preserve um, I actually just found that I've, I've heard lots of stories about that since I was a freshman and then I went and found it like last two now three weeks ago when I, the last time I was in Bang, I was just hiking around um, thought it'd be a really cool thing to do um, and to find um, above that the lecture hall that's our biggest lecture hall on campus um, classes range depending on your major um, I just thought I'd show you that just to get just to show you what campus is like in general um, and we have our average class size is very difficult to to determine especially across schools so like if you're in engineering um, it, it's pretty small um, if you're in um, pre-med a, a ton of students want to want to be doctors want to be um, PAs and, and medicine nurses um, so those classes are larger and the classes towards the beginning are a little bit bigger as well so you would have those kinds of classes in that lecture hall um, and then just a couple of things oh and that the hammock on the over on the right side that's um, we have hammocks in every community so that's just a fun thing that we do for um, de-stressing um, a couple of things about the city of Binghamton um, so in general, if you, if you look at that bottom picture of like the lights on the side of that building, um, that's a festival that we have in downtown Binghamton once a year, usually happens in September. It's called Luma. Um, it's a light festival where tons of people from across the country and, and the world come to present, present these lights on, on the sides of walls. Um, and, and it really is just like this whole festival. You walk around with 3D glasses. It's a really, really cool thing that downtown Binghamton does. Um, and we have a couple of like different food options. Um, so that's Kraft, that's like a slider burger place in downtown Binghamton. Um, that's Cacciatore's up the pasta. Um, I'm Italian, I love pasta and pasta is really great there. Um, but in general, um, awesome. Sugar Lips is like kind of like, a, um, it's like an ice cream place, um, usually opens up around the middle end of the spring uh, till the middle of the fall. Students love going to it, very aesthetic, lots of pictures, um, huge ice cream. Um, and then that's one of my favorite, um, in the top right, that's chicken bop. So it's actually like, um, like a halal, um, Korean mashup. A student actually, um, presented that to the university as an idea. He like loved making this food for himself and his friends. Um, and he, uh, approached the university and wanted to sell this food to students, um, in the marketplace. And he eventually got patented to have like one night a week. And then he continued to work, continued to work and opened up his own brand. And now it's across, like, I think it's eight or nine colleges at this point that have a chicken bop um, location and it's like really cool unique food um, so I just wanted to show you just some of the highlights of our campus and city and um, just some aesthetic things so well thank you guys that was terrific I appreciate that I mean honestly um, it's cool to have the uh, the images along with the stories it's important um, so what we want to do now is we want to answer any questions you might have you kind of know our students here, and, and uh, we want to get into a point where we can answer any of your questions. Um, so, 
I think a lot of what we're seeing now is all about is Binghamton fun. You know, is Binghamton, what kind of fun things you could do on the weekend? I know, you know, actually the Binghamton University is not actually in Binghamton, the city of Binghamton. It's outside of Binghamton. It's its own little community, right? The, the city of Binghamton, which is a mid-sized, very safe city, is about three miles or so east of campus. So you're not literally in a city. Um, so there's both, you know, there's on-campus activities and there's just a lot of fun to do, you know, um, in, the, in the town itself. But Binghamton is not a campus where students go home on the weekend. So I'm not gonna tell you what fun is all about. Isabella, do you have a story about fun at Binghamton? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I'll just talk about like one on-campus activity and then one of my favorite things to do off campus and then my fellow tour guides can add anything they That's want. Right. Um, but so one thing that we have at Binghamton um, every Friday and Saturday night is called Late Night Binghamton and it's basically when the university union both upstairs and downstairs will transform into like a themed fun night. Um, so one time there was a Harry Potter themed one, um, one time there was like a spa night one where there were like ho homemade like bath bombs and stuff like that but then actually um, in the basement of our union they're called the undergrounds which was actually just redone it's beautiful i got to see it before i left um we have a full lane bowling alley we have billiards we have ping pong foosball um and we actually also have a big huge flat screen tv and a really comfy couches where a lot of people will sit down and i remember this my freshman year i i went and there was there were people doing a mario kart competition and i have never seen something so intense in my life um and at all of our events on campus always there is always free food and when there's free food you can get a college student to do anything and to meet people and it's a really great way to come together um, so that's something that we have on campus um, and then one of my hidden gems that I found off campus um, it's in Vestal so it's actually in the town where the school is located um, we have a observatory it's called the Copernic Observatory and you can actually go and stargaze which is something I have never done at home something I never even thought about doing and then I was just doing some searches like what is there to do in Binghamton um, and I found this observatory and I went with a few friends and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen because and when we were driving there we were like where is it is this GPS taking us but you can't have light pollution to look at stars. So it was way in the woods in Vestal, um, and it was an awesome way to just like get away. And I actually saw Stanley Whittingham give a lecture on the lithium ion battery before he won the Nobel Prize for it. And I actually had no idea what he was talking about. And I had an engineer that I went with and they were kind of walking me through it, but it was just a really awesome experience. And the fact that he was there giving a lecture to just like Binghamton citizens and I was there, it was a really awesome thing that I found that not a lot of people know about, so. Kelly, what do you do for fun at Binghamton? Um, so as I said before, I'm an RA. So one of the things that I tend to do is I, I'm in my building a lot. Obviously, I make connections with all my residents. So we host events. So there's 15 RAs in my building. So almost every single night of every single weekday, there's some kind of event going on. So for example, the RAs on my, my floor, there's three RAs per floor um, in Dickinson. We had an event where on National Banana Bread Day, we made banana bread and we went around and we gave it out to residents. We um, were blasting um, the banana song, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. It was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and so some other events that, that I've done, we have, I do game nights, uh, hanging out in the RA office. RAs are on duty every single night, um, weekday and weekend from 8 p.m. to midnight. So no matter what day, you can go down, you can sit in the office, it's open to residents. So that's something that I loved doing when I was a resident and something that I love doing as an RA, just hosting residents in the office, playing games, having fun, having a good time. Cool. Victoria, what do you do for fun at Binghamton? Yeah, so I have to agree with Kelly. Some of the RAs come up with very creative activities for you to do. Um, there was one night, well, actually we did this several times, our RA decided to have a PJs and hot cocoa party and we all gathered around the TV in our common area on that floor. And as a floor, we watched a movie all in, in our PJs and hot chocolate. And my floor, especially freshman and sophomore year in Mountain View, we were very much a bunch of foodies. So for Thanksgiving, we actually had a Friendsgiving um, where all of us brought some sort of dish. It ranged from a full-fledged turkey to somebody brought like instant potatoes, but that's okay. Um, and we all shared a meal for Friendsgiving the weekend right before Thanksgiving. So those are two of my favorite things to do on campus. Something I really enjoy doing off campus is going to Uncorked Creations. It's an art studio above an old speakeasy actually in downtown Binghamton. And they have art classes either in pottery and ceramics or painting classes. 
So my friends and I like to go to their painting classes um, as kind of a way to unwind at the end of the week and have a little bit of a creative outlet outside of our more science and math focused classes. So those are some of my favorite things to do um, around Binghamton. Excellent. Andrew, what do you think? Sure, yeah. Um, so again, I'm a big sports guy. Um, on campus, I love going to the games, um, the basketball games, the soccer games. We have like tailgating um, going on as well on campus for um, homecoming and stuff like that. And that's super fun just because a bunch of alumni come back, um, a bunch of camp, uh, campus groups and um, student groups table. And so they're giving you free food. You're just walking around with your friends and then you get to see a really great game. Um, sports are really impressive at Binghamton as well. Um, the basketball team is pretty good. Um, and then off campus, uh, I like to do a bunch of different things. I'm, so I'm a foodie as well. Um, so I love to go to try different restaurants downtown. Um, and I, like I showed you some of them, but that's not even like, you know, chipping at the surface. Um, there's like tons I haven't even tried and I've been there for four years. Um, and I also, uh, one of my friends is on the club hockey team and they actually play at the rink downtown um, and their games are super awesome. Um, they have a, a large student support following as well. And I like to just go down there and hang out with them and just support my friends and uh, I guess my, my university. Very cool. Well, thank you guys. Byron, do you want to jump in? Yeah, so I would say a lot of these students that we may have, um, they're new to Binghamton. I mean, I know one of the students um, here, you know, comes from Elmira, but we may be having students come from California, Florida, New York City is very different. Um, all of you guys, our panelists, our students have um, already engaged and already gotten themselves to a level of where their leadership. One or two of you, can you just describe someone showing up to campus now that they've heard the great ones like you, our panelists, how do they get to that point? I mean, what's a first day like? If they know they want to be engaged fully, um, what about that person who wasn't accepted to the honors program or they're not in any of the research opportunities? Um, they're just showing up campus for the first day. How will they engage? So what I love about Binghamton, well, what, looking back now, is that they make your freshman experience something that is really they make it so easy to get involved because everybody wants to be involved. So for example, the first weekend we're back or it's the second week weekend that you'll arrive. Um, we have something called U Fest, University Fest. Um, and it's basically just um, an afternoon where all of the clubs and organizations are tabling on the spine, which is just a huge long walkway that we have. Um, and you literally just walk through there and everybody's like, if it's a dance club, they'll be dancing and showing you what they do. If it's a, um, a professional society, they'll have like laptops telling you like what conferences that they've gone to. And you walk through there and you just put your email down on any listserv that you want. Um, and they'll be emailing you updates about their club. They'll let you know when their general interest meetings are, which is basically just, again, the first week that you get there. Um, and you just go and check it out, whether you go alone or you bring a friend. That's the other thing. I'm somebody who doesn't really love super going places alone. I went alone to some first club meetings and I felt so incredibly welcomed. I think what Kelly said before about Binghamton not being cutthroat, it's not that we're not you know, hard workers and we're not smart and we don't want to do better. It is truly everybody wants to be your friend and everybody wants you to succeed. So um, I, I, I don't think you'll feel lost your freshman year. I definitely didn't. And it, and it was something I'm nervous. I, I was nervous about. Um, and also as far as like not getting into an honors program or not getting into a research program right now, like just as someone who has not stepped foot on campus, do not worry about that at all. I, I was not in it, in, accepted into any honors programs and I wrote a senior honors thesis um, and I did original research and that's an awesome way to get honors. Um, and, you know, as yeah, that's my answer for that. Yeah, I was just gonna build off of that. So for me, when I came into to Binghamton, I wasn't accepted into the, the freshman research immersion program. I actually was accepted into that my sophomore year. So even if you don't get in your, your first year, it is possible to get research opportunities in your sophomore year, junior year, senior year, et cetera. My advice to anyone coming into Binghamton who wants to become a leader is just to basically what Isabel said, take advantage, explore. You never know that what you're gonna find. So for me, um, for example, like I never knew that I wanted to um, become a residential assistant when, when I first came onto campus. It was really joining the Emerging Leaders Program that got me into that. So, every, so no matter what you do, like the smallest thing can become a springboard to achieve bigger things later on. So just take advantage of whatever you can, 
join as many clubs, try things out, make as many friends as possible. And I think everything just kind of falls into place once you kind of figure out the direction you want to go in, um, find goals, and you will achieve those goals eventually. I know it. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Another thing I think that comes up for a lot of students is the housing situation. So knowing that Binghamton is unique in the sense that everyone's going to be part of a community day one. I mean, you know, we have about 7,000 students that live on campus. We don't have 40,000 kids at the university, but we have all this land still. We have about 900 acres. But with the dorms themselves, how would you say, or even if you want to give the experience that you've had in each dorm, which dorm is the best? I mean, some students go online, they look, they hear about the different dorms. Which dorm is the best? And you can speak from your experience from each dorm you lived in, however you want. It's like you giving your little elevator pitch right now about why your dorm's the best for these students. Um, I can give just a, a brief overview about like the different dorms and um, the different vibes and stuff like that. Sure. And then we'll go go into the little uh, debate just so everyone knows like kind of what we're talking about um, if you haven't looked into um, the housing situation. So there are five different communities you can live in uh, at, at Binghamton um, uh, ranging from uh, closer to certain things on campus and closer to other things. How I like to think about it if you just want to like obviously uh, we don't have the ability to visit campus right now is all of the academic stuff is in the middle and all of the residential stuff is on the edges of campus. Um, so that just really allows for for like same distance from different dorms like some may be closer to the gym some might be closer to the lecture hall but they're all really great. Um, so there are a few different styles of rooms. Um, there are suite styles so you're so those are groups of doubles um, and then they have one or two bathrooms um, along with the common room. Um, there's typical, um, there's flat styles, which are unique to Binghamton University in a sense of they're in Dickinson community. Um, they have, uh, it, it's like a small corridor that enter, that is basically, as you enter two or three rooms, there's a small corridor, like a, a common space, not as large as like a sweet common space, um, but it either feeds into two, uh, into either three rooms or um, four rooms. So that's either um, two doubles and a single, or four singles, um, along with two bathrooms. And then there's typical corridor style living that you'll see at most colleges where it's um, two people living in one room with bathrooms in the hallway. Um, and Newing has a, has a riff on that. So there are five different communities, um, before I, just to give you a brief thing, um, Newing, Dickinson, uh, College in the Woods, Mountain View, and Hinman. Um, I lived in Dickinson. So I lived in, on my first year, I lived in a double in a flat. So I had uh, four roommates. So I had one person that lived in the same room as me and then uh, four people that lived in the same like flat as me. Um, and it was a super great living scenario. Um, I got to know everyone really well. The quad was super great. Um, and so like every community has a lot of outdoor space for you to enjoy as well as things like hammocks I mentioned. Um, you're not a far walk from the dining halls which are also in that outskirts of campus like I mentioned before. Um, so yeah, I, I loved it there. Um, I got really close with my roommates um, and we got involved in a ton of the same things. And then the next year I lived with them again, but I lived in my own room and I'm actually a twin um, and I have two younger brothers that are twins. So I like live around a ton of people. I've lived around a ton of people for my entire life. Um, and so in college, I had my own room for the first time in my entire life. So, you know, you can upgrade your living scenario going to college, um, which is pretty cool. And it was a huge room um, for being all by myself. Um, so um, I really enjoyed it. I got to see my friends, but also had that alone time I craved. Um, and yeah, in general, um, I loved it. Yeah. So if anyone wants to talk about somewhere other than Dickinson. Anyone want to touch on that casino in the woods that happens? Have any of you done it? Okay, good. Hi, I'm Christy. Um, I actually lived in College in the Woods. Um, right behind me, this uh, photo is Cayuga, um, which is actually my building where I lived on campus. Um, so we have a lot of really cool traditions in all of our communities, um, as the, the students uh, um, kind of told you already. Probably the, the biggest one for College in the Woods is um, 
uh, casino in the woods. We also have the Woodstock, which is the Spring Music Outdoor Festival. I was just wearing that t-shirt from 2015 yesterday. Um, but college or casino in the woods is really cool. We actually turn um, our dining hall into a real working casino for the night. Um, it gets completely um, decorated and the windows are blocked out and everything. Um, students can uh, play with real money. They can win and lose real money. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun and all of the money that the house collects actually goes to um, a local charity um, and it's different every single year. Um, and besides, you know, just going in and, and you get to kind of um, play, you know, uh, the casino games and, and gamble and things like that, all lots of fun music, um, treats and hang out with your friends. You can also volunteer to um, maybe hand out the treats and the snacks um, or you can uh, volunteer to um, kind of man one of the tables and the games. I actually um, learned how to play blackjack um, and be a dealer for blackjack. I spent um, a lot of weeks in training for that. So it was a lot of fun, especially when my uh, friends came to the table and I got to play with them. So that's probably the best one. I went to, into a lot of detail, but that's the one that a lot of the communities look forward to for college in the woods, for sure. <laughs> um, I don't, cool. Did you guys want to talk yeah, more ahead, about Christy. the tradition? The traditions otherwise I have a question from um, one of our audience members about living off campus so I know some of you have lived on campus as well as off campus um, this question um, was from William and William wanted to know where students live off campus and do you need a car to live off campus as well um, I can speak a little bit on that um, so I actually I lived on campus until my senior year my senior year I decided to move off campus just because I loved living on campus so much. Then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna be 22. I should probably live off campus. Um, so there are a few options for when you're going off campus, um, right? A, like there's a two minute, if you go a two minute drive off campus, we have something called U Club, um, which is where I moved when I was a senior. And it's basically like little townhouses, um, you know, different styles, different prices, different sizes. You can shop around, whatever works for you. Um, and that's where I live. Um, it's super close. Just you take a bus and it's like two minutes away. But I will say you, do, I did not have a car any of my four years on campus and the bus will take you to and from everywhere. Whether it's right out of campus, which is to downtown like historic Binghamton or left out of campus, which is more so Vestal, Vestal Parkway where there are chain restaurants, Walmart, Target, um, things along those lines. Um, and Anyway, to get back on the topic of off-campus of, off living, um, if you go right out of campus and you go to downtown Binghamton, um, there are apartments, there are houses, um, and honestly, you can just shop around with, with your friends and, you know, there's different landlords that you can reach out to, um, but there are bus routes to all of the areas where students live off-campus, which is incredible because, you, you know, if you don't need a car, and transportation is free when you're a Binghamton student, all you have to do is use your Binghamton ID, and you can get on our Binghamton blue buses, which are actually run and driven by students, you can get on those for free. But in addition, you can also get on Broome County buses for free, which is also incredible. And if you're ever in a pinch, you can always, we do have Uber, we do have cabs that you can utilize, but you 100% do not need a car. And if I could just jump in there as well, and it's not just for housing, the blue buses will also take you to the local like stores and restaurants and activities that you need as well. So if you're looking to go to the grocery store to pick out some things, or if you're looking to go to the movie theater, or maybe you want to get to a restaurant in downtown Binghamton, the buses will take you to all those locations, once again, at no cost to you. Andrew, there was a question here from one of our guests. Yep. Really wanted to know more about the PA program. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, uh, so basically, um, it's just like a track. So like similar, I can, I can speak to a bunch of the different tracks in medicine, um, just in case or in um, science or even law. Um, so you don't have to like be a, ma a major for pre-law or um, pre-PA or pre-med. Um, you would just be any major and then take the required courses. There are a ton of uh, advising resources for, for any major um, if you need help with uh, what classes to take and so on. Um, so basically you would go to see an advisor. We have a ton of pre-health, pre-med, pre-law, um, pre-whatever, pre-vet advisors that you would go to and kind of they would help you um, take the right classes and stay on the right track for applying to whatever school. Um, as far as Binghamton having a PA program, we unfortunately do not, but there, New York State is the, has the second um, most PA programs in the country um, as far as statewide. 
Uh, there are a ton of opportunities even within the SUNY system. Um, so it's really good to just have connections um, within SUNY and um, Binghamton's a really great place to prep as a, as a pre-health or pre-whatever graduate school major because we do have a ton of advising. We have a bunch of professional clubs and organizations like the one that I'm president of. Um, I have friends who, who are pre-law. There are pre-law um, and professional fraternities and sororities and stuff like that um, that help you stay on track to to becoming, uh, to becoming that position or um, that profession. Um, so we are opening up a graduate, um, I believe, uh, PT stuff like that soon. Um, and that will eventually um, be coming to Binghamton. So that'll be a, a really great opportunity for, for other, other schools, but not PA. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there too. So, you know, I, I work with, um, with students for years, especially, I love watching, you know, going from high school and then transitioning into college and it feels so big and daunting at times but the reality is you know Binghamton has such a really nice community you make friends so easily and that's really important to know that it's, it's, it's just the atmosphere is friendly there um, we talked about fun um, that's good but you know what I want to know more about and this is a big question like you know what happens if you are struggling in school and you need help and you need homework help and you know, where do you go? How easy is it to get to your teachers? Kelly, can you jump on that one? Yeah, of course. So my freshman year, I had to take intro to chemistry, which is one of the hardest classes I've ever had to take for my environmental studies major. And so I was struggling a little bit. Um, I wasn't sure like when, what I needed to do to raise my grade, to do better on the quizzes that, that we had, get ready for exams. So one thing that was really, really great that Binghamton has is uh, they have tutoring rooms. So for major classes such as calculus, I did the same thing for calculus and chem, they'll have one room set aside that's open every weekday from like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's constantly staffed by a teaching assistant and you might be wondering what a teaching assistant is. So, so a TA is their kind of nicknamed, are present in most classes that are above 50 or 60 students. So they're there to teach breakout sessions, which are sessions with smaller amounts of students. So even if you're in a large class, you might have a breakout session that kind of breaks it down. They'll go over all the information. What's important is that they won't teach any new information. So that allows you to kind of um, learn and comprehend everything that the, the professor is talking about before any exams. So I used to go to those rooms and uh, talk to my TAs, get homework help, uh, prepare for quizzes and exams um, whenever I had one coming up and that really helped me feel confident, uh, know what I was doing and be able to achieve the grades that I wanted to in those classes. Oh, that's a great story. Um, Victoria, you're an engineering student, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So can you talk about, was there a time you struggled maybe and you, you got the support and help you needed to be successful? Do you have those? Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So okay, cool. honestly, all the time. Um, you come from high school and a lot of you, you guys are high achieving students. You, that's why you got into Binghamton. So you might have swam through high school just fine, but when you get to college, some of the classes can be a lot more difficult. Um, sometimes it might be intimidating to go up to your professors and ask questions, but our professors, they're here first and foremost to help you as a student. So they're here to answer your questions before or after class. They have office hours a few times a week, usually for two or three hours at a time, where you can stop into their office and ask them questions, either homework, tests, quizzes, something they said in class, and don't be intimidated to go up to them. Um, we also have office hours held by our teacher's assistants, like Kelly was saying, and we have tutoring as well. Um, tutoring is a great resource on our campus that is free for you to use. Um, and it's great whether you're falling behind in the class or you want to get ahead or even if you want to hear the information in a little bit of a different way than your professor maybe spoke about it, you can go to a, tu a tutoring session with other students in your class and get a little bit of extra help that way as well. Also, never be afraid to send emails to your professors and to your teacher's assistants. That having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with them can really help improve your performance in the class and your understanding of the material as well. Oh, you're right. It's, it's no secret. I mean, high school is just a lot like college in the same way that you just do better when you can talk with your teachers, right? And you have that support. And that and Binghamton is very well known for that. So great questions. Great questions. Um, does anyone have any other open questions? I, you know, I see where the questions that our guests are submitting, it's kind of wrapping up now. Um, but we want to do a couple things. Um, it's not over. I want to make sure you know that Binghamton is always here to support you.
it's a big deal. We want you to be successful at, in college and at Binghamton. So we have throughout the day from 8.30 to 5, every day, if uh, any of our guests or any students at all, parents, if you have a question, please feel free to click on. We have our chat with a, an admissions counselor live. You can zoom in and we'll do this all day long for you if you like. So we're here for you. But you know, um, as we get closer to the time we need to close up, I want our students to just, you know, just give us a couple minutes or some maybe final bits of advice that you may say to a high school student that's going to be here transitioning from high school to college. Isabel, would you start that off for us? Yeah, sure. Um, um, I guess really quickly, I'll just say why I chose Binghamton and then just my advice for the transition. Um, so I chose, I originally started looking at super tiny schools, um, small liberal arts schools that I thought I needed because I, I like small groups of people. I consider myself an introvert, even though it might not seem like it. Um, and I was touring these schools and then I toured Binghamton and it immediately became my top choice. Um, and the reason for that is because I, Binghamton has this feel and the community of a small liberal arts school, but it has the resources of a large research university. Um, so, you know, I was, I was touring some of the other, these other schools and they, they weren't talking about research. They weren't really talking about how involved their faculty were, um, which again, these are all incredible schools, totally not bashing them. But when I came to Binghamton, you know, these living communities, these clubs, the student leadership made it feel like a tinier, tight-knit community but at the same time I was doing research with the chair of the sociology department you know I was getting you know an intern I had the opportunity to get an internship um, at um, Bronx Legal Services so things like that really made it stand out and just of course the fact that um, it is more affordable and a lot of our students have plans to go on to graduate school um, and further their education and it really is important to start thinking about that early on um, and then for the transition I would say my biggest thing is trust yourself um, you will know when you get to Binghamton, you know, what clubs are, are something that you're going to stick with for your, all your four years, something that you just want to do for a few months. Um, and, as, and also as far as friends go, trust your gut. Um, just because, you know, you're all incredibly intelligent, well-rounded, passionate people if you've gotten to Binghamton. And if you're applying to Binghamton, um, is just, you know, trust yourself because college is the one time to do everything for you. Um, so just keep that in mind and you will do awesome. Thank you. Kelly. Yeah. Uh, so once again, I chose Binghamton because I was really impressed when I came on a tour that there were no walls between majors. I felt like no matter what I majored in, STEM, not STEM, that there, there would be something for me there and there would be a way to explore my other interests. And my best advice for a first year student is to get involved. My first year, I didn't really do that much as far as clubs. And that would be my biggest regret. I really wish that I dipped my toes into more things, tried to explore more in, in my first year on campus. Um, and then my advice for the transition is to just breathe. Um, it's not going to be, it's not guaranteed to be a walk in the park. Like it will take time to fully adjust to, to being away from home. It certainly did for me and I'm sure it, it, it did for everyone else here. Um, but just reach out to friends, uh, explore, and eventually you will find your place on campus. As Isabel said, it's a big school with a small school feeling. So if you get involved, even just in your dorm, on your floor, like, go to your RA, like talk to people. It'll make it all seem less scary, I guess. And that's what it did for me. <laughs> Very cool. Victoria. Yeah, so I think Isabel and Kelly really hit it on the head. Um, another aspect that we kind of touched upon today is the community works together to find success. So it's a very camaraderie environment where everyone is helping each other. If I have a question on my homework, I'm gonna to go to one of my peers in the same class and they will help me. Um, so that environment I knew I was going to be successful in. I was never one to kind of stick it out myself and, and kind of be able to achieve at such a high level without the help of others. So being able to have a community around me that really cherishes and the, your um, individual attributes are really um, cherished as a whole um, and you guys help each other out that's the kind of environment I wanted in an education and that's what I found at Binghamton as far as a word of advice I think one of the best things to do as a freshman is keep your door open um, to your hallway so you meet people on your floor that was one of the best ways to meet students um, of all different majors my first year here and a lot of those friends I met just living in my building and living on my floor are still my friends to this day so keep your door open literally and figuratively yeah, good one. 
Andrew. Yeah. Um, so for me, overall, um, coming to Binghamton, I came here for so many reasons. Um, but where, where I thought I'd be four years ago is, is completely different from where I am now. I feel like um, Binghamton fostered an, envir an environment that allowed me to grow as a person and find like what I was really passionate about. Um, so I came in as a, as a pre-med, as most students who are interested in science and either nursing or pre-med. Um, and the large amount of resources present at Binghamton University um, told me that there, there were other options out there for me. Um, and I left Binghamton and I, I left home um, in Scarsdale and, and came to Binghamton and I found that I really did want to be around a family and that maybe becoming a doctor wasn't for me, um, that I wanted to be present all the time and not consumed by work. I know some people love being a doctor. Um, I knew that that wasn't for me in a school like Binghamton that was, was open and um, really honest about what the future may hold for you, allows you to discover who you really are. Um, and I don't think I would have found that anywhere else um, w without the resources here. Um, coming here in general, I think that I think that I met a lot of people um, who have become my lifelong friends. Um, and I think that I, some of these people on the panel too. Um, but in, in general, I just think that that moving forward, Binghamton is, is an amazing choice just for your your mental health, um, your academic success, um, you, your your social life, like ton of friends, ton of things to do, um, and and just overall a really safe place to go to go to college. Um, and I think that all of you will succeed so much. Um, one final piece of advice I have would just to, would just be to be to keep an open mind in general because I never thought I would be anything other than a doctor. Um, I never thought I would meet some of the friends I made or do some of the things I've done over the last four years. Um, just going into something that you're really passionate about, walking into into a club that you know might seem like not your vibe, but you were really into that. Like, let's say like anime, you're like, oh, wow, that's a super cool thing. And like, but you're kind of afraid you'll meet people that you really share like similar passions with and, and that'll allow you to grow as a person and um, individualize and kind of just show your true self. Um, so that would be my advice. <clears throat> you were a you're admissions counselor now, one of the best we have, but you were a student here not too long ago. Do you have like, we have one minute left. Do you have any final advice for our guests? Sure. Um, I was just going to tack on to, to Andrew. Actually, he was talking about a club that, that maybe you are a little afraid of going to or, um, you know, it might not look cool or something like that. Mine was the Knitwits. That was the knitting club on campus. Um, and I knew how to crochet. Not many of my friends did, but I actually learned how to knit through college and I met a lot of really cool friends going to that club. Um, as far as a piece of advice, um, having been a, a former student and now an admissions counselor, um, uh, I would definitely say ask questions. Make sure that you exhaust all options. Make sure that you go through every channel that you can to see what is possible before you decide, oh, that's not for me or I can't do that. Um, for example, I, I was a transfer student and um, I thought that, um, you know, I came in as a junior, so I only had a couple semesters left and I thought I couldn't um, study abroad. Uh, being in this role, I definitely definitely could have. I didn't ask the right people. And we have a whole office for study abroad endeavors. And you'll find that at Binghamton, we have so much support, so many professionals, and a lot of different offices to, to help you out. So ask questions. Don't be afraid. Even in your college search process, that's what we're here for. Okay. So we literally have seconds. Byron, do you have a quick last minute a bit of advice for our guests? I think follow what you just heard from these individuals. I mean, these are all folks who have individual stories. I'm sure they identified with some folks in this room. Um, and I would say just have an open mind. That's really what it's about. I mean, it's many years Joe and I have went to a university or college, um, but the, the door open, that's true. I mean, leave your door open to kind of meet people. People will walk in, start talking, just have an open mind. Once you show up, Everything's going to fall in place. That's perfect. Thank you all. And I, and I agree. Again, we're proud of you. you. You know, coming to Binghamton is a big deal. You know, if you look at our accolades and our rankings, the students here are brilliant, you know, and they just, they just become amazing alumni. They leave with very little debt and lots of opportunities. The Fleischmann Center will guide you toward a career development that's unheard of, you know. So we want the best for you. We're, we're proud of you. We're glad you're here. And, you know, if you look in that chat box, you'll see if you have any more questions. By the way, thanks for being with us tonight. 
Um, and thank you to our panelists. You guys are amazing. I'm going to clap for you right now. You guys are great. If you have any more questions, just join us on that link, that Zoom link, and you get a chance to talk with some of the admissions councils throughout the day. So, all right, everyone. Bye now. Thank you.